You told a story about Chris Sharma, you trying necessary evil and then Chris Sharma yeah, it's a doing classic, necessary uh, evil. Can, can you tell me about that? Can you tell the story again? And I have some, well, I, I, I want to elaborate the, it on. I, I forget what I said on Tim Ferriss, <laughs> but I mean, the, the nuts and bolts of it are that, you know, Chris Sharma did necessary evil in his like second year of climbing or something. I mean, it, it was the hardest route in the country at the time is was it his third year climb? Basically, Chris Sharma just started climbing. Climbs necessary evil. It's the hardest route. Or maybe the hardest done by an American. Maybe Just Do It had already been done. I don't know the exact history. But it was this incredible achievement in American climbing. You're like, cool, Chris. You know, he does it in a couple tries, like no biggie. And then, and he wanted to call it, like, whatever. It doesn't matter. But it meant Like a down, to, downgrade? No, no. He wanted to call it, like, you know, turd burglar or something. Like something totally <laughs> right. stupid. Or like, right, right, right. like the fart smuggler. Like, you know, it meant like nothing to him. He's just like, cool, I climbed this route. It was fun. Moving on. Yeah. And, you know, and I've tried necessary on and off over the years. And, you know, I've basically been climbing and training my whole life. And I still can't freaking climb necessary. And you're sort of like, man, after 20 plus years of effort, I'm still not as good as Chris Sharma was as a 14 year old who had just found this new sport. Yeah. And you're just kind of like, confound it <laughs> but there's it just right. shows a certain level of natural talent you know right he's, he's just really really strong right no I, f I found it fascinating because i think it put talent into real perspective for me and obviously like we all have incredible opportunity to grow and develop as people as athletes all these things i don't think anyone's like destined to not be a good climber um but uh, yeah, but like comparing you to him, more, I was just like, yeah. whoa, that's fascinating. Yeah. That's so yeah. crazy. I think that's something that a lot of people don't appreciate uh, or, you know, it's hard to see the contrasts there because I think, you know, if someone's a famous climber, you just assume that they're a really, really good climber. But the thing is, everyone's given a different set of, you know, strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, some people have a lot of natural talents, others don't. Some work really, really hard, you know, like I definitely don't have any of the talent that Chris does. But, you know, I was given a separate set of gifts, which is that one probably being like a real passion for climbing, like going out and doing it all the time, which then sort of allows me to get the the mileage required to feel comfortable doing some of the scarier things that I've done. I mean, you know, it's like there's just a whole it's just a whole different path. But you're like, man, the path that he set off down, like I couldn't take that path. It's just it's it's totally closed off to me. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just way too hard. Like <clears throat> I can't do any of the moves <laughs> like the stuff that he did as a kid. I still just can't do at all. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, you know, it's like just different, different strokes, different folks. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And to fill in a little context for people that don't know that route, Necessary Evil, uh, 14C, maybe hard 14C at uh, Virgin River Gorge. And uh, I believe it was the hardest route in the country at the time. I think Just Do It had been done. done afterward? I think, it, I think Just Do It had been done, but I think Necessary was a little harder oh. and came a little later. Interesting. Yeah. That's, that's my recollection. I'll fact check it after this episode point of podcast you just throw stuff out there and nobody even cares yeah totally checks, you know <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> totally um i was gonna save this for later but that's a pretty good lead-in i mean you you know diminish your sport climbing relative to the best in the world which i i get what you're saying which is totally appropriate but you've done i mean you've done so many 514s up to 9a up to 14d no um, the 9a i've done is probably for 14c it's, okay it's the classic thing where you're like oh yeah i climbed 14d but you're like it's probably 14c <laughs> and then i've climbed a couple of 14c's but you're like yeah but like with the knee bar they're probably easier you know it's like <laughs> so that's kind of the bummer of a lot of my hard sport climbing is that when you really think about it you're like you know it's probably not that hard but <laughs> but it's fine but you are correct that i've done i don't know like 50 or 100 514s and so right. i've done you know, I have a solid foundation of the grade for sure. What would it take for you to climb like 15A? Oh, I'd need stronger fingers. Basically, I need I need more power. I need to be able to pull harder. I need to be able to do harder moves. So some combination of more strength and more power. <laughs> Basically better in every way. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you would have to change? Because it seems like you train a lot and you're like very interested in it. Do you think you'd have to change your your habits? Like stop going out and having these like 30 pitch days to- Yeah, to and actually I think the biggest change with it, I would need uh, a little bit more consistent th consistency throughout my year. Um, like, so for example- you're always going on trips. And, yeah, so yeah. like this last year, this winter, I went to uh, Antarctica. Basically I went mountain climbing in the Southern hemisphere for a month in the winter. And the month before that, I'd focus mostly on cardio and like snow adventures. I was still sport climbing a little and, you know, training and everything. But it's just hard to, you know, like Chris Sharma isn't climbing the highest peak in Antarctica. You know what I mean? It's like, that's just not, like Alex Megos probably can't even hike up a hill. Like his legs are so skinny that like, 
he probably can, but he, but he chooses not to because it would be a waste of his energy. Right. And so I think that if I really wanted to devote myself to, to high performance, very hard climbing, you know, I'd have to rein in some of the other things that I do. Mm. Is that a goal? I mean, maybe a little, um, we'll see. I've, I mean, the thing is though, that that's been like a real tension in my climbing for the last 15 years, let's say, where it's like, I've always wanted to be stronger. I've always wanted to climb harder. But then the reality is that I get more satisfaction from the adventures and from the big outings and from the crazy experiences. And, yeah. um, and like going on expeditions around the world, it's like the life experience you get from doing trips in rural Africa and things like that. I mean, they kind of outweigh sending one more 14C or something. Mm. And so- That's cool. You know, I mean, in a lot of the expeditions that I've gone on, <clears throat> you know, that's gone a long way towards informing the work that I do through my foundation and, and the other sorts of things that I do in life. I'm kind of like, you know, I'd rather have a broad, rich life. Mm. I mean, I do want to send harder roots, but you know, at, at what cost? Yeah. But I am sort of seeing now as a dad, uh, basically being a dad lends itself more to the to the high performance sort of hard climbing, like a little more time at home, a little more time training, um, and sort of fewer big adventures away from the, the house for a long time. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, you know, good time to try to climb harder roots tap into that dad strength. Yeah, I know so far I haven't had any dad strength, but we'll see. (laughs) I mean, it makes sense. It's just, you have to focus your time. Um, Yeah, that that, it's it's crazy how many examples there are of that leading to like huge performance bumps for people that think that their climbing hard days are over. You know, all of a sudden they just level up in a big way because they have to focus with the limited time they have. Yeah, I I wouldn't be like, if I decided to go back to university or something and suddenly just had a schedule for, for, like I dropped out of college and I'm not going to, but but say I suddenly had a structured program for the next four years where it's like, I'm going to be in one place for four years, only doing this thing and only taking two weeks of vacation a year. And then just stuck to a to a consistent, you know, hangboarding and, and sort of board climbing program. Like, yeah, I don't doubt that I would my bouldering would probably jump a couple grades and and in turn my sport climbing probably would too. Yeah. Uh you know, but would I die a little on the inside? Like, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, just, on the inside? it's all it's all it's all trade off. <laughs> right. Totally. Do you have a wall here at your house? I have a hangboard inside my wife's closet. <laughs> but uh but I am hoping to build a sort of home garage setup. Nice. But we don't don't have anything yet. Okay. Gotcha. I know it's kind of sad because the gyms in Vegas are really sad. What is the deal with that? Are there like really sad. building limitations? Is it like a height thing or something? Because no. you would think that Vegas would have like a mega gym by now. I know you would think. And I and I think maybe that some some companies are working on that kind of thing. Okay. But that's kind of always been the rumor for the last 10 years. Like someone's always trying to work on that and nothing's happened. Huh. I think part of it is that there are currently three sort of adequate gyms in Vegas. And so... It's hard to come in to build, you know, it's weird. It's not like a totally open market. Right. Because there are already three gyms serving the Vegas area, Mm -hmm. but they're all just very, you know, I mean, I'm personal friends with everybody involved in all the different gyms, so I don't want to be too disparaging, but you're kind of like, but they're all very. None of them uh, are modern mega gyms. Yeah. 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 There leaves a lot of room for improvement. Right. Right.